Remember that they're changing the sound of my voice. So we left off on Hebrews 6. This chapter is important, so let me just finish it. It's only like 20 verses or so. So when we're on verse, um, verse 12. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised, right? To become one of those rather than imitate. It's not an act. It's being in reality. The next section, the certainty of God's promise. When God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself. All right, God is God. Saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. Now listen very carefully, because a lot of people have this wrong. A lot of Nazis had this wrong. A lot of European nobles who look at their royal family instead of looking at God for answers. Look at their customs, mere customs, rules, and traditions, and protocols. A lot of people from all kinds of walks of life, a lot of Jews have this wrong. We all have this wrong, really, by their actions. Okay, so again, when God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. And so after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. People swear by someone greater than themselves, and the, and the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all argument. Because if God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised, he confirmed it with an oath. God did so that by two unchangeable things in which it is uh, two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. I must have that uh, typo there. Well, anyway. We have this hope for as an anchor. Keep in mind that it's profoundly disgraceful for them to put it that way. When they said, quote unquote, we who have fled. Now, I've never fled from anything, you know, that would make one a coward if they fled from that thing. When I was sparring, for example, and I had those uh, dress socks on, it's on wet grass, it was laundry day or whatever. They have a tendency to kind of cause things to line up that way. And it's not... Oh, mental illness or something. It's something they're doing deliberately. There's thousands and thousands of people who talk about gang stalking by now. There's the Havana Syndrome. There's, it's clear that there's people using technology to cause these events to occur. And I'm not going to tolerate the opposition view at this time. And even the trolls stop trolling so much because they see that I'm clearly right about that. But anyway, so they, you know, the person brought several other people to kind of try to intimidate me. It didn't work. It wasn't moving the slightest. I had the... Um, the dress socks on those wet grass. I took a few steps back at some points in one of the first match, uh, you know, one of the first matches, and you know I still won obviously, but I did that to kind of make you know there was no ref there to kind of make it so that you know the the person would stop. And I I said toward the beginning, say you're supposed to stop after you're struck, and he didn't want to stop. And you know there's a bunch of cowards behind the scenes trying to encourage people to behave like that and so on and so forth. So. You know, I never met the person in my life. I didn't have a personal beef with him or something. Something that they put him up to probably hacked his brain enough to cause him to be aggressive, which isn't the same as hacking someone's brain in a way to reduce their performance. So they probably increased his performance by making him more aggressive and, and manipulating the testosterone levels in his brain, in his body. And they reduced my performance. And you see that with the matches. You see in every match, I don't look very kind of, I don't look like I have a body that's kind of, you know, as, as, as defined as it was, okay, from about 2011 or so to about 2016, the beginning of 17, my body was extremely defined, except for at certain time periods, you know, certain couple of days in a row, week, whatever, when I was fumed in a way that it reduced um, my, my brain body connection and caused my muscles to go uh, more kind of flabby and so on instead of the very refined and defined more defined than Bruce Lee muscles that I had when you consider the degree of flesh that I have on my body my height etc the sum total definition and, and form and four are connected for what right for striking so it's very disgraceful for them to put it that way and of course Paul and the people a lot of people wrote the Bible we're trying to cater to the governing class at the time and try to make it seem like they're despicable, pagan, governing class, family line based spirits are magically the so great and that it's just it, it, it's stupid. 
and and so a lot of times when I read the Bible I'm very bitter about it as I look at the different translations but first and foremost um, the ex what you would expect people to get from it you see in my videos I go the distance to make sure that people don't confuse what I'm saying in the Bible they do not do that they want you to confuse what they're saying because the Bible is by Bill who is a deity of rape by deception rape by confusion a deity of chaos confusion storms storms cause confusion and chaos what have you it's important to note that there okay so let's skip ahead real quickly here to Hebrews 11 then we'll go back um, Hebrews 11 verse 17 by faith Abraham when God tested him offered Isaac as a sacrifice he who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son even though God had said to him it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead and so in a manner of speaking he did receive Isaac back from death by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. So he reasoned that God could bring the dead back to life or change the form of his, um, his inheritance, his promise, right? And so the argument being made here, again, I am not a Christian. When I think about Christians cheating the Royal African Falcon Martial Order, it is infuriating. Okay, a bunch of white Jews and LGBT people went on boats and raped everyone and said, believe this book, after thousands of years of everyone knowing for sure that it's a Royal African Falcon Martial Art Order everywhere by Egypt, everywhere in Africa. They knew. So when they, they act like your offspring is, is, is that you act like it, it has to come through Abraham or something, it's fucking outrageous. It is sick. And they think that because they put ham in his name and they put little pieces here so you can piece it together if you have the patience and tolerance, that it makes it okay? No. I have no patience for someone who looks at this situation, looks at a bunch of racist, white, Jew, and LGBT supremacist, Eurocentric, scientific racist, what have you, okay, who fabricate evidence, who coerce people, rape them, and abuse them, and that they believe them and not me. That's fucking crazy. Don't believe them, believe me. I'm righteous. Your own book says you know them by their fruit. And Paul, Paul's one of my least favorite characters in the Bible. Just a scoundrel. Just a scoundrel. You know, he put things in a way that was confusing on purpose because he was ro working for Rome still. Regardless of what they said in popular culture. Basically, the Romans said, hey, you know, we're going to have the Council of Nicaea. Paul's going to be one of the main per people writing in the New Testament. And when all is said and done, everyone's a Roman fucking dog everywhere you look. Neo-Roman. That's a coincidence. It's the bad Roman wolf tree said, beware of wolves in sheep's clothes. Broad is the way to destruction. Everywhere you look, it's Greco-Roman site, Greek fraternities in college, Club of Rome exerting all this power, all these world leaders in the Club of Rome. There's senators in various places, Roman-styled governments all over the world. It's fucking clear. Roman Catholic Church, and from that bad tree came the Protestants. Pretty straightforward. And a lot of them are, are crypto-Jews. Talmudic, Kabbalah, Zohar, you name it. I mean, this is pretty straight fucking forward here. And so, so it's, it's easier to cuss these people out, which I'm not doing in this video. Mind you, I should, you know, if you haven't seen nothing, you know, I'm trying not to break the rules. It's easier to cuss them out all day, every day and do God's work than to try to use their book and be polite and do God's work. And you think that's not proof? That's not proof what the hell is. They say, well, it's just your temper. Well, you think I should be a fairy punk? Is the Lord a warrior or a fairy, liberal, hippie, pacifist ninny? The fuck do you think? You think God wanted a fairy spirit? Maybe he wants everyone to meditate in the thong. I mean, use your fucking head. You're really that fucking doll? Why couldn't the Buddhist beat me? Why couldn't the New Age Buddhist beat me? Why couldn't the Shinto and the Hindu? Why couldn't anyone else? Because my mentality and method is superior and divine. Theirs isn't. If you don't know that, what the fuck? You have a picture of Bruce Lee and a thong on your fucking wall? And some people might say, oh, see, that's not necessary. So it, it cheating me out of my right to bleed in the mind of a fucking dog is okay. But if I fire back at a fucking worm who said, don't mind if I'm a celebrity, that that's not fucking okay, you fucking coward? Okay. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner Jesus has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. So obviously you're supposed to come into me and then only from there on the solar boat, so to speak, right? Psalm 19, the sun, the symbol of the bridegroom. 
um, can you enter my soul, which is not literally the Son, okay, and then enter into heaven. Say, in my name, in my spirit, in my warrior spirit, in my divine, royal, and noble warrior spirit. Okay. So let's just keep going in, in, in Hebrews 7. Hebrews 7, Melchizedek. The priest Melchizedek was king of Salem and priest of God Most High. He met Abraham returning from the defeat of the kings and blessed him. And Abraham gave him a tenth of everything first. The name Melchizedek means king of righteousness. Then also king of Salem means king of peace. So when Christ is made a, you know, a king in the order of Melchizedek, he's, it's, he's earned the title of, of a righteous king. He's a king of righteousness, right? And peace with God, not peace with, with mere flesh-based worms. Without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life, resembling the Son of God, he, may, he remains a priest forever. Just think how great he was. Even the patriarch Abraham gave him the tenth of the plunder. Now the law requires the descendants of Levi, who become priests, to collect a tenth from the people, that is, from their fellow Israelites, even though they are also, even though they also are descended from Abraham. This man, however, did not trace his descent from Levi, yet he collected a tenth from Abraham and blessed him who had many promises, or who had, who had the promise. And they're making it harder for to speak, especially at this point. Leave it to a bunch of racist, greedy Jews who are ordering people to persecute me, and everyone like them to try to make it harder for me to speak when it's talking about money, right? <laughs> My goodness. And that's fucking ridiculous, right? Yes, everything on this world is supposed to be mine and you're all thieves, you're all pirates. Yes, you should be tithing to me. I don't give a fuck about money, but where it overlaps with insulting God, okay, it's fucking ridiculous. You know, I'm a brain surgeon son. If you haven't ripped off my family, I'd have plenty of money, okay? And either way, I don't care that much about it. But you people were dumber than shit to cheat God by cheating me out of this. Just fucking retarded. In the one case, the tenth is collected by people who die. But in the other case, by him who is declared to be living. One might even say that Levi, who collects the tenth, paid the tenth through Abraham. Because when Melchizedek met Abraham, Levi was still in the body of his ancestors. Jesus like Melchizedek. If perfection could have been attained through the Levitical priesthood, and indeed the law given to... Um, The people established that priesthood. Why was there still need for another priest to come, one in the order of Melchizedek, not in the order of Aaron? For when the priesthood is changed, the law must be changed also. He of whom these things are said belong to a different tribe. So he of whom these things are said belong to a different tribe. And no one from that tribe has ever served at the altar. For it is clear that our Lord descended from Judah, right? He descended from Judah, not from, you know, the Levites, from Levi. In regard to that tribe, Moses said nothing about priests. And what we have said is even more clear if another priest like Melchizedek appears. One who has become a priest, not on the basis of a regulation as to his ancestors, but on the basis of ancestry, but on the basis of the power of an instructable life. For it is declared you are priests forever in the order of Melchizedek. The former regulation is set aside because it was weak and useless. For the law made nothing perfect, and a better hope is introduced by which we draw near to God. Now, first of all, Everyone who's a Christian should know this already, right? Do you follow Levites in your church? Is there a tribe of Levi on this planet? Maybe some people in a cult that claim to be. That, that's, that's, that's interesting, but it's bullshit. So you know for sure that he's right about the part that the priesthood changed. Okay. There's very key ideas here. One is someone who has an indestructible life, right? The power of the martial power of his life, right? One who has become a priest on the basis of a regulation to his ancestry, but on the basis of the power of an indestructible life. Now, this is interesting because again, the Bible superimposed on something else and they build on that kind of fairy story where the truth is hidden in it based on the, uh, the principles. And that's part of the argument that was made by Christ as a character in the New Testament, right? He says, how, are you, how can you who are evil say anything good? Okay, he says, you know, if scripture can't be set aside, the key word if, okay, he says things like this. He says, you have mere human rules, customs, and traditions. That includes your book. That includes the Bible. When he says not one stroke of the pen of the law can be set aside, he's talking about the essence of the law. That's why he brings up the golden rule and the greatest commandment. He says, all the law and the prophets rest on these ideas, right? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you if you're a righteous person and loving God with all your heart. 
And the Lord being a warrior goes without saying. Exodus 15, 3, which is the key part that people always overlook. They take on some G.I. Joe stupidity in the military or the police. They take on some American martial art bullshit, some 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 non, you know, some martial arts that systems are monotheistic and so on and so forth. They never understand what a holy warrior is because they keep trying to remove the African falcon, right? The heterosexual, pure masculine, royal African falcon martial arts spirit that people are supposed to submit to. Women are supposed, still supposed to be feminine, but supposed to submit to that spirit, which is God's spirit through me. And we know it's God's spirit because it's universal pinpoint and moral precision. Instead of being some kind of con man, some kind of shyster, going, ah, blah, 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 when it's time to address that argument, okay, it's put front and center. They have no viable counter argument. I say it plainly. I've been saying it for years. I do not own old YouTube. I do not control who watches my videos. And I have thousands of videos on many different channels that are saying this. So the basis of my right to be the head priest and not a priest in the church, but a priest of God, okay, is on the basis of my martial power, of my indestructible life, because it is has the armor of righteousness, right? Melchizedek means king of righteousness, the armor of moral precision, universal pinpoint and moral precision, focus, moral intensity, regardless of my brain function. They have the power to reduce my brain function as, as pagan worms. OK, but they don't have the power to take away my power and my right to lead. And when they try, the gap increases more if such a thing is possible because the gap is infinitely great. So, again, this is another point in the Bible. One of many, many points is telling the Jews who argue that salvation is through them to shut the fuck up and quit being anti-human with your racial supremacy argument. Galatians 3:28. There's no Jew or Gentile. You're all one in Christ Jesus. The kingdom of heaven will be taken away from you and given to a people who will perform its works. Another scripture, another one is those who obey the commandments of God are my family. And if you were another one, John 8, if you were Abraham's children, you would do what he did. But instead, you're cheating people. And he, so he calls them the people he's talking to at that time in the story and anyone else who the shoe may fit, the children of the devil. So we, and we see in, in Galatians 4 where it says Jerusalem in the sky is our mother not here on earth so he's saying the people on earth can't say hey we're over here in jerusalem we claim to be jews you should magically follow us no they can't say that and be right that is a pitiful sniveling coward argument this is p pathetic i'm not on Ra iran's side or hezbollah or uh, houthis or any of these dudes either because they're all lying about god and they even pick up arms why they're lying about god what they're doing is mere human roles, customs, and traditions, and it's for controlling money and women, and it's not for helping people. If people were tithing to me and I was the head of the churches, I'd have a moral committee, be extremely transparent with every penny that's spent. There'd be signs on tiny home communities. There would be a moral committee and extreme transparency. People would know for sure that the money is going where exactly it should go to in a cost-effective way, no political bullshit, no so-called humanitarian group or, you know, local group, homeless advocate group, what have you, fucking things up as extremely disgraceful. I'd rather be crucified upside down while vultures peck on me while I'm still alive than to misuse money that's supposed to go to poor people. The son of two doctors is the son of God first and foremost. There's no words for how sickening that is to me. Pretty straightforward. Now in part two, we'll, we'll finish the chapter.